Welcome to my Stop Fighting With Your Son podcast. If this is your first time here, I recorded four episodes especially for you to help you eliminate the fights right away and start connecting with your boy as soon as possible. Go to episodes 54 through 59. I have four boys of my own and I know better than anyone how much you want to have a good relationship with your boy and all the things that can come in your way. If you are a mom of boys, I am the coach for you. Let's go. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just sitting at the school parking lot waiting to pick up my kids. I have half an hour or even more, so I'm going to record this for you all and go for a little walk. So what is your one thought that you have about your boy? If you were to describe him in one sentence, what would it be? You know how sometimes you you have to describe him to other people about how he is, or you have to fill out one of those forms at school, like tell me about your child. What is that one sentence that often comes up? What is that description? And I want to tell you that that matters a lot because what it you what it is that you're saying about him is your thesis that your brain's making and then and then this is very important your brain is taking that thesis and going out and finding evidence to support that thesis in real life it's looking for evidence it's looking for proof to support that thesis whatever that thesis is even if there's no evidence um, to support it, if we were to look at it really closely, your brain will still find it. Like if there's no like concrete evidence, it will twist other things to support that belief. Why is this important? Well, hey, let me tell you my example, my story. I just recently noticed that when I tell people I have four kids, they usually have a reaction And they're like, oh, wow, you must be so busy. That's what they always say. And I noticed that I started saying, in response to them, I always started saying, oh, it's so loud, which is true. It is very loud. But I also noticed that I my feeling changed as I started saying that. Not a not to a good feeling. It is not a good feeling. <laughs> um, I started feeling almost like attacked by the noise. You know, it's so loud. It's too much. I kept saying, and I um, so I didn't feel good. But I remember recently, very recently, when people would ask me that same question, or not that same question, they would, you know, I would say, oh, I have four boys. And they would say, oh, wow, you must be so busy. And, you know, in response, I used to say, oh, it's so fun. I used to say it's so fun. And I felt so differently. I felt so good. You guys, you really have to check check what it is that you're telling people because that is kind of like the summary of that topic if you know because you got to you can't tell them all the things so you will usually summarize it what is it what is that one sentence that you describe your son with and you know is that sentence you know i love him or uh he's such a good boy or he's a troublemaker or um oh gosh, he's so difficult, or we fight a lot, or um, he never listens. What is that one thing you repeat about him? Check in with yourself. How does it feel when you say it? Okay. And like I always say, our relationship with our son is our thoughts about him. And so if our main title thought about him is something that does not feel good, then maybe we could choose, we would choose to, to pick something different. Because when we think something that doesn't make us feel good, then that is the fuel that we're taking with us to our everyday interaction with our boy. So just like in my example with the, with the four kids, when I used to think uh, it's so fun, how I felt was proud, um, kind of lucky, 
and like just good overall good you know like kind of happy about the fact that I have four kids and when the same noise would happen what my brain was filtering for was how entertaining it is how fun it is how lucky it is that I do have that many kids and when it you know when I heard that noise I was like thinking back to the days when I did want four kids and I thought oh it would be just like a party (laughs) you know and so I would see it I would be like oh well it is kind of like a party it's loud everyone's doing something everyone's talking Right, so I, my brain was screening to find proof how that it is fun, and um, then how would I show up with my kids? Right, how did I show up? I showed up a lot m- m- more open to the noise, to the fun, to the boys, and um, but whereas if I started telling myself. It's so noisy. The feeling that it generated was of heaviness, closed off, kind of being attacked. And of course, then I show up with my boys super closed off. I'm just, I just don't, I don't want it, right? I just want to shut down. I don't want the noise. I'm judging the, how much noise it is. And I keep saying, and then, so from that thesis, right, from that, sentence that the one sentence then you have a bunch of other baby thoughts that are born so supporting arguments that are born and if your main thesis is this is so noisy it's too noisy too much noise then you will find supporting arguments like it shouldn't be this noisy i can't handle it they are so loud stop screaming why are you so loud etc right so I want you to um, to kind of put this in the back of your brain and listen to yourself speak when you're talking to other people about your son and take it as a clue to what it is you're believing about him. And if you're fighting with him, then what what feeling is driving that fighting? That feeling is produced by your thought what is that thought that will be a really good thing for you to know because you can always always shift that thought around move it around shake it up change it to another thought try on try on all the different thoughts see how they feel and more importantly how do you interact with your son when you're different thinking different thoughts so be careful uh, with with thinking that what you're thinking is true, okay? Your brain will find evidence that it's true. And I want to suggest that you can decide that something else is true. You can decide that you love your boy no matter what. You can decide that you are you have a good boy. Sometimes uh, when I call my mom and I say something not nice about the boys, oh, she says, never say that again. I never want to hear you say that again. And she's so right because how is that helpful? And I definitely don't even want to have my brain finding evidence for things, things like that, right? So I am human too. That's why I have all these thoughts just like you. And uh, I'm just uh, kind of uh, filtering, filtering the thinking, looking at the thoughts, deciding what's useful. And I I would love for you to be also um, good at uh, seeing the feelings. Like how how does this thought feel? How does this thought feel when I th- when I believe my son is a troublemaker? How do I feel? Is it true? Maybe it's not fully true. Maybe he's also a good boy. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you found this example useful. Uh, And um, choose to think something about your son that's always true. And you know what's always true about your son? Is that you love him. Right? Isn't that true? So no matter what, you can always go back to that thought and remember like, oh, I kind of still like him. Yeah, I like him. I love him. Okay, I love you all. Have a great week and stop fighting with your boys. You love them. Bye.